Hello, my name is Amanda and we're going to be doing some storytelling and drama together. What's your name? Brilliant! Lovely to meet you. Now, do you want to do some acting with me? Are you ready to start? Great. First, as super amazing expert actors, we need to warm up. First of all, we warm up our face. Can you scrunch up your face like a raisin, like this? And this is how you say raisin when you've got your face like that. Raisin! Then I want you to make a really big face like this, like a pumpkin. And go, pumpkin. Let's try. Raisin! Pumpkin. Raisin! Pumpkin. Pumpkin. You try? Brilliant! Are your faces feeling a bit more warmed up? Good. Now, let's look in our imaginary pocket. It's an imaginary chewing gum. And I want you to put it in your mouth and chew really big like this. Mmm. -hmm. Then, I want you to blow a bubble with your chewing gum. To blow a bubble, we need to breathe in and blow out really slowly. And then, I want you to show me with your hand how big your bubble gets. Let's try. Mm -hmm. You can pinch your bubble and push out into the air. Now, we need to warm up our body. So, we are going to sing the Grand Old Duke of York and march at the same time. Do you know how the song goes? The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Great! Now, we're going to do that again, and every time we say up, we're going to stretch up into the air. And every time we say down, we're going to bend down and touch the floor. Ready? The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill, and he marched them down again. And when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Wonderful! Big round of applause for all of you. Let's try some acting now. I want you to imagine that it's very, very cold. So cold it makes you shiver. And you go. Now you try. like there are icicles in here with all this amazing acting. Now, who feels a bit magical? Can you imagine that you can put spells on people and you have a wand? I want you to take out your wand, show it to all of us, and maybe every time you put a spell you go zap, 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 like that. Try that now. Now here's a hard one. I want you to imagine that you're a clock. An old-fashioned clock, not a digital one. With the 12 all the way up here and the 6 all the way down here. And every time it hits 6 you go dong, dong. Give it a try. Amazing! Now, can you imagine you're searching for something? Can you show me what you do when you're searching for something? Maybe you put your hand up here. Or you take out a magnifying glass. Hmm. You try. Wonderful! I think you should give yourself a big clap and a pat on the back like this. 
And if you're with someone, tell them, well done. Even if they weren't acting with you, think of something they've done today and just go, well done. I think we did our acting so well that we should celebrate with a dance. What's your favorite dance? Is it something from TikTok or the floss or something you made up yourself? Whatever it is, do it now. I'm gonna do mine. Ready? <laughs> Good! <sighs> You're tired after all that dancing. I think it's time for me to tell you a story, but you'll still get to do some acting in it. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Cinderella, who lived with her stepmother and stepsisters. Her stepmother and stepsisters were very mean to her. Her stepmother didn't like Cinderella and made her do all the housework. She had to cook and clean and sew. She had to do the shopping and carry the heavy bags home all by herself with no help. She never had any new clothes, only her stepsisters hand-me-downs. And with all the work she did, her clothes were often torn and dirty. She slept alone in a tiny room at the top of the house with no heating and a broken window. So she was so often cold. Do you remember when we acted being very, very cold? Pretend you're Cinderella and do it now. Her stepsisters were even worse with Cinderella. They would tell on Cinderella if she took a rest or forgot something or dropped a shopping bag, and they would pinch her if they thought no one was looking. They knew pinching Cinderella wasn't the right thing to do, and that's why they didn't want to get caught. Hurting someone for no reason is not a good thing, and no one should have to put up with that. If Cinderella were a child today, she could call a child line and talk to someone about her problems or message a counsellor on their website. But she lived a long time ago, before telephones or even the internet were invented. One day, the family heard that the king and queen were going to have a ball, and that all the young ladies in the land were invited because it was time for the prince to choose a bride. Cinderella never had any fun, so she really wanted to go to the ball. Plus, she had heard there was going to be a feast filled with treats that she'd never had before. So she tried asking. Excuse me, stepmother. You're looking very elegant today. Has anyone told you that? I was wondering if I could go to the ball with you and my sisters. I could take care of your bags and bring you cake during the evening. Her stepmother glared at her. She was very angry, so she made this face. Go to the ball. You will do nothing of the sort. When we leave, you will clean this house from top to bottom. Go to the ball. What nonsense. Cinderella was so sad and lonely to be left behind when her stepmother and stepsisters went to the ball. She realized more than ever that her life was unfair and that no one should be allowed to treat her that way. But where would she find solace? I need help. I need to ask for help. But who could she ask? And just like that, her fairy godmother appeared. Do you remember when we imagined that we had a wand and we could do spells? If you take out their wand, your wand, you can be the fairy godmother. Her fairy godmother said, I am so happy you have asked for help. Now what can I do? Cinderella said, I wish I could go to the ball too. Her fairy godmother thought for a moment and then she waved her wand. Wave your wand with me. Zap! And suddenly, Cinderella wasn't dirty or dressed in rags. She was wearing a beautiful ball gown with lovely glass slippers on her feet. And she twirled and twirled. Oh, wow! 
said Cinderella. Come outside, said the fairy godmother. And standing outside the house was a beautiful carriage with four horses and a driver waiting for Cinderella. Now, all of this can only last till midnight. So hurry up and go to the ball and have a lovely time. But make sure you get back by midnight. Cinderella was very excited to be going to the ball. But when she entered the room, she felt a bit shy. Everyone else seemed to know each other. The prince spotted her by herself. And he was a very kind young man. And he noticed that she was feeling lonely. He decided he would ask her to dance. Do you remember your favorite dance from earlier? Do it again now. It turned out that Cinderella's favorite dance was also the prince's favorite dance. Not only that, they had lots in common. They were enjoying themselves so much, they forgot to ask each other's name. Cinderella was having so much fun that she forgot to keep checking the time. Do you remember your clock from earlier? Let's do it now. 12 all the way up here. And then clock struck nine, dong. The clock struck ten, dong. The clock struck eleven, dong. And finally, the clock struck twelve, dong. And Cinderella realized what time it was. Oh no, I have to go. And off she ran. She ran off so quickly, the prince didn't know what happened. All he knew is that he had never met a girl he liked this much. And now she was gone. He searched high and low for her. Do you remember how he searched earlier? Pretend to be the prince and do it now. The prince didn't find Cinderella, but he did find one of her shoes. Cinderella had ran off so quickly that one of her shoes had fallen off. And she hadn't even realized. He picked up Cinderella's glass slipper. He felt something was wrong and he needed to find this mysterious girl that had disappeared so quickly. Perhaps she needed help. He went to every house in town to try to find the girl the glass slipper belonged to. He didn't know her name, so he insisted on seeing every single young girl in each house. In Cinderella's house, they tried to hide her from view. Her stepsisters tried on the slippers, of course. They didn't fit, but they made excuses saying that they had twisted their ankles and their, her, their feet were swollen. The stepmother had told Cinderella to stay in the kitchen or you'll regret it. Cinderella was very scared of her stepmother, but she thought maybe the prince would help her. So she snuck out right before the prince left. May I try on the slipper? Although she looked quite different, the prince was sure the slipper would fit. And it did. You don't like it here, do you? Said the prince. Not at all, said Cinderella. Would you like to come away with me to the castle? Said the prince. Yes, please, said Cinderella. And Cinderella left her horrible stepmother and stepsisters and moved into the castle where no one was mean to her. Her and the prince got along so well that they fell in love and got married. And they lived happily ever after. And that's the story of Cinderella. I felt really sorry for her at the beginning because she was stuck in a house with family that were very mean to her. But she realized she could ask for help, that she deserved better. If Cinderella was a child today, she could call Childline or Solace or download an app called Bright Sky. She wouldn't have to wait for a prince. Think of all the time she would have saved if she hadn't had to wait for a prince. Can you think of three things she could have done with that time? I think she could have learned the lyrics to her favorite song baked a massive chocolate cake, and done 50 jumping jacks. 
we're going to have to say goodbye now. But thank you so much for dancing and singing and acting with me. You've done so much and I'm really impressed. And if I could, I'd high five all of you. <laughs> but now let's pretend that we're Cinderella after she became queen and say goodbye like the queen, like this.